What's happening, booth junkies? What's happening, every? What's happening, booth junkies? In another video, when I showed you about my little dog clicker, I, uh, I, I promised to show you the fastest way that I know how to edit video, especially when you're editing long form narration. When you're doing your own engineering, you're doing your own directing, your own editing, editing and everything, the faster you can work, the more money you're going to make per hour, right? If you spend all of your time editing audio, your per hour wage goes down. So you want to be able to edit as quickly as you possibly can. And I use Reaper as my digital audio workstation because it is highly, highly customizable. And I'm going to show you how I have mine configured. And if you use Reaper, you can use this trick. And if you use your own workstation, you can see if there's something similar. But the way we do it in Reaper, normally, I think the, the default way is when you have an edit, let's switch over to my screen here. When you have an edit, if you've used the dog clicker trick, you can see the waveform where the mistakes have been made, right? So all, each one of those lines as my dog clicker clicking where I've made a mistake. So let's take a listen. Come the driver for the day. The air was filled with the fragrance of summer that morning as we raided for... The air was filled with the fragrance of... Right, so there was a there's a section that I need to go back and edit. Typically, in uh, your workstation, what people have to do is they highlight the point where they want the to the edit to begin, and they hit split, uh, and they split the waveform however they would normally do it. They click S in Reaper, um, and then after that point, you split again, and then you have to make sure that you have ripple editing turned on. If you don't have ripple editing turned on, when you Go to remove that section. It doesn't uh, compress it back for you and you end up having to move all of your waveforms together. Well, that takes way too long, especially if you've got a few hundred of those to do. So let's go back to our original setting here. If you have ripple editing turned on, you would uh, click S, click S, and then delete and it automatically brings those two waveforms together for you so that's really handy but that's still a whole bunch of clicks so the way I have mine configured is I just want to highlight the mistake and then take the mistake out with a single keystroke and move on now that's not built into Reaper by default as far as I know that I don't know if that's built into any workstation by default if it is cool and I'd love to hear about it in the comments but in Reaper it's not but luckily with Reaper you can map certain commands to a keystroke in your uh, on your keyboard and that makes it so that you can just turn through these really quickly so let's take a look at how to do it let's go back to our original here in Reaper there's the actions menu and the actions menu allows you to create macros or custom keystrokes, custom uh, workflows for things that you do commonly. Now, the one I have is called delete from time selection. And this can probably may be made even, even shorter. This is the one that has worked for me. But the first thing I want to do is make sure that if I haven't turned ripple editing on for this track, I want to make sure that ripple editing is turned on. And then I split those two items and then I take out what's in the in the time selection and make sure it all gets compressed with the ripple editing and then put my cursor at the end of where that time selection was so that I can start to hit play again. And the way we did it in in Reaper is they have the list of every single possible action that Reaper can do and you can just drag them from one side to the other and they become part of your workflow in the order that you make them. So in this case, I turned on ripple track editing. I choose split the items at the time selection. Of the time selection, I then remove the contents of the time selection, moving later items, and then I go to the end of the time selection. You might be able to get away without the split and just do the remove contents. I had the split because it made sense for me. It might be optional, um, but you can you can try it and see how it works for you. I like it because if I don't have a time selection made, it throws an error back to me. So I know I didn't, uh, I know I didn't make a mistake. Uh, so set ripple editing, split times at time selection, time selection, remove contents, and then go to the end of the time selection. So that's the workflow. And then you can m m uh, map it to any particular key that made sense for you. In my case, I have it mapped to 
uh, when I have my big keyboard, I have it mapped to the number pad, enter key, nice key that I can get at without looking at it. And I also had, I initially mapped it to the letter Y because Y sort of is shaped like two things coming together. And so that was a good mnemonic device for me to remember what it was. And so I just mapped it to the letter Y. And we do that by clicking add. I can map it to another keystroke if I wanted to. Let's say I wanted to map it to, I don't know, the bracket key. And I click that it will tell you if it's already mapped to another key and you can decide if you want to override that mapping or not. If you choose yes, then it takes away from whatever it was mapped to, in this case, go to the next marker and it becomes your mark, your keystroke, or you say no and it won't do it for you. So then that's, that's really the configuration of it. So we, after we've, after we've done it, now what we do is we just highlight whatever we wanted to whatever the mistake was. And as you edit, you'll learn that you'll learn to sort of read the waveform. And when you see two waveforms that look virtually identical, you can see how these two look virtually identical. There's just a place where I trailed off. And so we just highlight and then highlight that section by clicking and dragging up in the time here. And then for me, I hit Y and it collapses out. We do the same thing. We hit Y and then it collapses out. We hit Y. Now look at this. This is the this is one that's interesting. This one I, I, I made the mistake in the middle of the section. You see how this waveform here looks like this waveform here. So here's where you want to act with a little bit of precision. So I just zoom in on that waveform. And if I take away, if I start my time selection right at the beginning of that waveform, you see that little tiny bit of blank that's before. If you want to keep the timing the same, make sure you give yourself that same little bit of blank on the other side. And that way it will still match up with whatever your regular cadence was. So if I take that away, now that cadence should be the same. And I don't have to go through and tweak and ripple edit those things together. So now it's about the same right there. So now without even listening back to all of those errors, I now can listen to the track and I should hear when no one of the errors. privates was out sick, the other one would automatically become the driver for the day. The air was filled with the fragrance of summer that morning as we waited for our guest to arrive. It would be a beautiful day for sitting in front of the firehouse, soaking up the rays and solving the world's problems. Bobby Farr was the firefighter who was sent up to cover the shift. He was a relatively new man on the job and had a father and brother in our local union. When he arrived for duty, Bob informed me that he hadn't had many opportunities to drive. Great. So now we've gone through, and that's a pretty good rough edit, right? Right in the beginning. There's some, maybe some timings that we'd want to tweak. Maybe uh, uh, in between this one right here, this first edit, it felt a little rushed. The driver for the day. The air was filled. I might want to have a little bit more of a break there so I can just slide it over and add some of that room tone back in. The other one would automatically become the driver for the day. The air was filled with the fragrance of summer that morning as we waited for our guests to arrive. So that feels pretty good. That feels like a pretty natural cadence. And you see that those edits, that took literally uh, 15, 20 seconds to go through and actually edit that audio. So if I've got a whole chapter to do, and that chapter is maybe an hour long, and maybe there's five or 600 of those edit points, I could go through while listening, I can be working ahead and editing as I go. And that allows me to multitask. I can be listening to what my recording was and editing at the same time. And it will make it so that I get my job done a whole lot faster. The client gets their work faster and I now am making more money per hour, which allows me to take on more work. So anyway, that's how we do it. Uh, I hope this helps. And now just get in your booth and record something amazing.